Rigetti Quantum Computing just reported quarter two earnings. I'd like to go into the transcript. I'd like to unpack the earnings and kind of give my predictions on what's coming next for Rigetti in 2025. Let's jump right in. Rigetti had a press release over here on their website with their Q2 2025 financial results. They're announcing the general availability of their 36 qubit multi-chip quantum computer. So that's the headline of this earnings call. My thought was that was going to be August 15th, but it looks like that's coming with the earnings call. And I'll give my impressions as we go, but let's kind of dig into the numbers here. So. Rigetti Computing reported its Q2 2025 earnings, revealing a revenue of 1.85 million, 1.8 million falling just shy of the forecast of 1.87 million. The company launched its CPS 136Q, a major advancement in quantum computing technology. Despite launching this chip, the world's largest multi-chip quantum computer, the company faced increased operational expenses and a broader market slowdown. The total operating expenses were 20.4 million up from 18.1 million year over year. So a small increase, but honestly, we see way bigger increases in a lot of companies that we cover and sometimes spending just gets out of control. So that's one thing I like about Rigetti is they're pretty predictable. Cash position, 570. 1.6 million with no debt. Pretty awesome cash position there. So just going down this investing.com article, we go into the Q&A and I wanted to really quickly before we get into the Q&A, just kind of bring up the profit viz and go over historic revenues, historically what the stock has done. So we see that with Rigetti, it's a story of not too much revenue. They're a self-proclaimed R&D company, but they have given us, they have delivered in this earnings call on a hardware promise, and they have another hardware promise of 100 qubit chip later in 2025. So we'll take a look at that in the earnings call. This profit viz is not quite updated yet, so I'll definitely pull it up again on the channel, but their assets are gonna look a lot better and they have no debt. So they have a lot of cash and no debt, which is a great position to be in. I'm just on the Rigetti career site. And even when it comes to that OPEX number, which is a little bit increased, they have currently posted about nine jobs and some of them are called future open positions. So they're not even necessarily, all these aren't necessarily open. So that helps make OPEX salary, that type of thing more predictable. Now let's get into the earnings call itself. Instead of listening to the earnings call, I've gone and highlighted the transcript and some key moments that I thought were interesting. I think it'll save us all some time. I know your time is valuable, so let's just get in and out of here. So the first question came from Troy. As of 6-30-2025, we had approximately 571 million of cash. We just covered that. So Troy Jensen with Cantor Fitzgerald asks for mergers and acquisitions or accelerating R&D. You've got a lot of money on the balance sheet now. What are you gonna do with it? As you saw, we demonstrated, this is Dr. Kulkarni, we demonstrated a four by nine qubit multi-chip system. We are deploying it as we speak. Our plan for the end of the year is to deliver a multi-chip 100 plus qubit system with 99.5% two qubit gate fidelity. And from there on to continue to increase the fidelity as well as qubit count using the chiplet approach. If we can accelerate that timeline using our balance sheet, as you correctly pointed out, we will obviously look at that. But I believe right now we are still looking at roughly four to about four years to get to quantum advantage. So Dr. Kulkarni goes on to describe quantum advantage as 1000 plus qubits with a 99.9% .9 fidelity. Troy asks a follow up question. So Troy's question, just with respect to OPEX, it would assume just kind of a sequential growth going forward, but no big steps, no big leaps in spending. And their chief financial op officer said, as the boat said, we're adequately funded in R&D, but we're looking for opportunities right now. I don't think we anticipate any significant expenditures. So they were then asked about the Quanta partnership, 
So right now, Quanta's role is to come up with speed in the control system. And our goal being Rigetti is to get them up and running with control systems that work with our QPUs fairly soon here in the next few years. How confident are you being able to parlay your success into the 100 qubit chip? And then Dr. Kulkarni says, the beauty of the chiplet approach is once the fundamental architecture is defined and the performance is there, scaling up becomes a lot easier by definition. And that's the whole reason for the chiplet approach. So all the reasons that help semiconductor CMOS industry with chiplets are the same reason why we chose the chiplet approach. Now that we have proven that it works at high fidelity, our confidence is fairly high that we'll get to 100 plus qubit and beyond fairly so then David Williams asks, you've talked about three to four years, but it seems you're making such great progress on, on the scalability side that you might be able to accelerate that even though maybe the error correction is lacking. Dr. Kokarni, we will certainly try to accelerate our timeline from that four year to quantum advantage. Having said that, there are chiplets, certainly helps us quite a bit to achieving that milestone. At the same time, there are important metrics as well. We talked about getting to a thousand qubits for that quantum advantage or more getting to 99%, 0.9% or better two qubit gate fidelity. So there's a lot of, from my view, reading over this transcript, there's definitely still scientific barriers to getting to that. So then there was a question about mergers and acquisitions as part of their growth stories. And, and Dr. Kulkarni says, as of today, we don't see anything out there that can really help us. We're in the leadership camp right now when it comes to overall quantum computing performance. And I just want to give my two cents there. This approach from Rigetti is a very siloed approach. While they are building a modular stack, which allows many different potential future builders of quantum computers to plug into their system in different ways, what somebody like IonQ is doing is they're acquiring companies like Oxford Ionics and space companies and LightSync for quantum networking. And it's making their com company stronger by proxy. And Rigetti is going a different direction where they're saying we are a leader in this space and we're kind of ahead of everyone except for maybe some of the biggest tech players. And even those big tech players are maybe only ahead in a couple select cherry picked metrics. So very confident earnings call, very confident language coming from the CEO in this earnings call. And my interpretation is they are in a good place. They are in a good place with their cash. They're in a good place with their technology. The issue is, and I, I think there were a few questions about the M&A, is why is a question, why is a company like IonQ acquiring all of these amazing companies and Rigetti's more siloed in their approach. It may benefit them to accelerate their own timeline if they partner outside of their unit. That's just my interpretation. Right now, Rigetti doesn't see it that way. The benefit of that is that their cost and OPEX stay more predictable and they have been fairly predictable and fairly flat. So how did this manifest? The takeaways for this, so I threw the whole transcript in GPT and bas basically this is their biggest milestone yet. They released their largest multi-chip quantum computer in the industry, which is, and I believe that's wrong. That's, it's not 136 qubits, it's 36. A uh, record performance achieved of 99.5% median two qubit gate fidelity, scalable architecture, they have their end of the year target of 100 qubit base system at 99.5% fidelity. They have a path to quantum advantage aiming for 1000 qubits and 99.9% .9 fidelity within four years, but they have barriers to that scientific barriers of the, even just the coolant lines, all the cables, they're going to have to figure out how to do that. And all the quantum companies they reference are, are facing similar problems. They're strong in their balance sheet. They've had a slight revenue dip compared to last year, but I don't think this is a company where people are expecting tons of revenue. And they also mentioned the 
U.S. Quantum Initiative, the National Quantum Initiative expiration affecting that bottom line. And we've been talking about the legislation that's been kind of stuck in Congress on quantum and quantum research. And it does affect these quantum companies. It affects their quarterly calls because they don't have that money coming in anymore that they can report as a publicly reporting company. So I think that uh, it's very important that lawmakers also make sure that these companies that are doing this research and are building these computers have the resources they need to continue to be successful. And then they talked about Quantum, their strategic partner and their competitive edge. Overall, as an investor in Rigetti, I leave this quarterly call and the conference call and the earnings. I leave feeling just as confident, if not more confident in what Rigetti is doing. And if we look at how this manifested in the chart in after hours, there was a little bit of sell off, a little bit of volatility. There was actually a wick touch at 1648, bottom at 1537, and it kind of just flattened out around down 3.8% after hours. It'll be really interesting to see how the price action develops for the rest of the week. I think everything was positive news. No big surprises here for me as a Getty investor. I think the company's on the right track. What do you think? Leave a comment in the comments below and let me know what you think about Rigetti for the rest of 2025. We're having a lot of fun over in the Discord. I wanted to just point this out. Big Bear had its relief rally today and we were having some fun generating some images of Big Bear at the Holy Gates. I hope Big Bear can make its recovery. But anyway, if you're interested in joining the Discord, just join as a YouTube member. I'd love to see you over there. I'll leave the link in the description of the video. All right, guys, thanks. We'll talk to you in the next one.